Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up and working with our traction control in our MoTeC M1 programming. Now, the traction control we're working with here in this training module is going to be covering the GPR and the GPRP firmware package from MoTeC. Other firmware packages may have the traction control set up a little bit differently, so what we discuss here should be applicable to other firmware packages. Um, but let's jump in here and take a look at what we have to configure in order for it to even turn on the traction control. So we're going to have to have a few variables already configure and set up. Those are going to be our wheel speed sensors. We have to have at least one wheel speed sensor front and rear. So with her front wheel drive car, front wheel speed sensor, rear wheel speed sensor. That could also be a vehicle speed sensor for your drive speed. So whether you're front and rear, you have to have at least a drive speed and then a ground speed in order to calculate a percentage slip. So the entire traction control system is gonna be based on a percentage slip and we'll find that it, it, it has to have everything calibrated properly in order to have that slip calculated properly. So we're going to get into how that works a little bit later, but we do have to have our wheel speed sensors or vehicle speed sensors configured properly. We also have to have a gear ratio set up and configured in our MoTeC. We also have to have a clutch, uh, a clutch position sensor or clutch switch to signify whether we're having the clutch engaged or not. And then we also finally have to have some means to turn off or on the traction control. So it's going to be an arming switch. Now it can be an on-off toggle switch. It could be a CAN keypad. I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to use a rotary trim pot to have different selectable slip levels within our traction control programming. So let's jump in here and take a look at what we need to do to set up these individual aspects of the traction control to have it actually function. Then we'll turn on the traction control. I'll talk about some of the programming that we have within the traction control uh, setup and configuration. And then we'll just do a quick demonstration so you can see how it works. It's actually really simple to program to work with, but we have to have these fundamentals taken care of or the traction control will not function properly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is move from our tuning window. And this is gonna be in the My Workbooks that I supplied for our training course. We're gonna go here under Setup. Now under setup, we're going to move all the way over here under our speed setup. The first thing we need to do here is configure and set up our wheel speed sensors or our vehicle speed sensor, depending if it's coming from the transmission or the rear differential. Um, let's go here and take a look at what we need to configure. So in this case, the first thing I need to do in my wheel speed resource window here for programming is go into the drive type and set this to either front or rear or all wheel drive. This is going to tell the MoTeC what to expect in its slip calculations as well as when we're doing um, the gear detection. It also needs to know what, what it's looking for in terms of calculating the gear ratio from your specific drive type. So in this case, I'm a front wheel drive vehicle and I'm going to select front, front here in my options. So it's pretty straightforward. The mode we can leave here as not in use. Not in use is going to use our vehicle speed estimate as our actual vehicle speed source and um, that's the way I've always configured this, so that's what we're gonna be working with here. Uh, let's go here to wheel speed, and let's go down and talk about a few things. Now under our wheel speed setup, we're going to have our front, and then we're gonna have some parameters here, and then we have our left, our right, and then our drive. In this case, I have on my vehicle, my front left wheel speed sensor wired into the MoTeC. Now in my case, I'm utilizing a Hall Effect style sensor. Depending on what type of sensor you're dealing with, that'll go ahead and change possibly some of your configuration settings. So let's talk about that real, real quick. So what we're gonna find here is that we have um, some parameters here to program. First thing, if we take a look, our sensor resource. This is where I've assigned my actual wheel speed sensor. So this is where I have the signal wire from my Hall effect, Hall effect wheel speed sensor coming into the MoTeC. This is where we're feeding in the signal under Universal Digital Input 3. Then if we take a look at our sensor setup and configuration here, it's gonna have my pin. We have a pull-up control, active edge, and threshold. Now in this case, pull-up control here is going to be on. Our active edge is set to falling edge. I find it's more efficient to detect a signal coming from a falling edge on a Hall effect. Now, if you have a VR magnetic sensor, so you're running factory ABS sensors on your, uh, on your vehicle and you're wiring that into the MoTeC, your pull-up control will be left off and then your active edge here will either be falling or rising. We can see an example here. You're gonna have to use the input capture option or an oscilloscope 
to be able to see if you have a falling or rising edge signal coming from your VR magnetic style sensors. So a falling edge is going to be when we're looking at our waveform coming from the actual output of the sensor, we'll find wherever it's going to have a faster change in the sensor slope or in the, the waveform sl a slope, I should say, that's going to be what the significant edge is going to be and what we have to program in here so it counts it correctly. So in this case, we can see here, taking a look at the, uh, the examples they provide, a falling edge shows that we have a faster falling movement of the actual waveform. So looking here, it rises slower and it falls faster. This is a falling edge example. Rising edge is gonna be the opposite, where the rising edge is gonna fall is gonna rise quicker than where it falls here on the uh, on the waveform. So that's gonna depend really upon what kind of sensor you're dealing with, and you have to scope it to really figure out what you're working with. Now the threshold here, if you have a VR magnetic sensor, is typically going to be zero volt. Uh, because you'll find that that's going to be where that waveform always crosses at zero. But if you're dealing with a Hall effect sensor, this will be specific to the sensor that you're working with. So in my case, the threshold that I've programmed here is 5 volts. I'm seeing about a 10 volt, and we can see that right here, what the actual voltage maximum is going to be. So we see on both my wheel speed sensors, which are both Hall effect. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.